Hi, this is Fred Litt, and welcome to Workflow in Style, where you will learn how to use your personal technology to be more organized, make better presentations, and enhance your bottom line. Our topic is Personalized Windows. In Part 2, you will learn to use the Windows Taskbar to speed your access to your favorite programs and websites. Let's get started. The Taskbar is the horizontal bar at the bottom. Let's begin by customizing it a little bit. Right-click, make sure that Lock the Taskbar is not checked. That will allow us to drag the Taskbar to different edges of the screen. I like mine at the bottom. We can also change the height of the taskbar by grabbing the top edge and pulling up or dragging down. We can hide the taskbar if we don't want to see it by right clicking, clicking on properties, and then checking auto hide the taskbar and click apply. As you can see the taskbar is hidden until we move the mouse tip down to the lower edge and then it appears. I'm going to uncheck this because I like mine to be there all the time. Let's now talk about the five areas that make up the taskbar. Starting on the left, we have the Start button that opens the Start menu. We have the Quick Launch area. We have the Toolbar area, the Notification area, including the Time. And at the very right, we have a hidden button called the Show Hide All. Let's begin with the Start button. Let's click on it once to open it click on it again to close it. We can also press the Start button on the keyboard to open it, press again to close it. So I'll click to open it. There are many features that are part of the Start menu, the most important of which is how we locate important programs and important folders. In this video, let's just talk about two of my favorites. So let's hunt for Microsoft Word. I'm going to click on All Programs, and now I have to find Microsoft Word. If I don't know what it is, I'm at a disadvantage. Fortunately, I know it's inside of the Microsoft Office 2013 folder. I click there, and here is Word 2013. A single click will open Word. To make this easier to access, I'm going to drag the Word icon onto the taskbar in the Quick Launch area. This icon will now open Word with a single click. Click it once and Word now opens. I'm going to close it. So let's go back to the Start menu by hitting the Start button. I now want to add Internet Explorer and Excel. So once again I'm going to hunt for Internet Explorer and drag it into the Quick Launch area. Then let's go back and locate uh, Excel which is in Microsoft Office and I'm also going to drag this into the Quick Launch area. Now, a second feature that I really like in the Start menu is Search Programs and Files. Let's assume there's a program that I want to use, but I don't know where it's located. So all you have to do is, if you know the name of the program, simply type it in. So a popular program that I use to edit audio files is called Audacity. So I'm just going to begin typing in Audacity, and now Windows will automatically search, and there it is. So a single click will open it, but let's drag it to the Quick Launch area. So I'm going to click on the Start button to close it. So now I've added four of my favorite programs to the Quick Launch area of the taskbar and they will always be easily available for me to use. The next area is the Toolbar area and I'm going to begin talking about that by first opening up Internet Explorer. Single click and in Internet Explorer, you'll notice two areas. There's the address bar on top, which is where we type in the name of the website. And then we also have the favorites bar, where we have placed some of our favorite websites. And they're in the favorites bar to make them easier to access. So I'm going to close this. And I'm going to show you how you can quickly access Internet Explorer and some of your favorites from the taskbar. So let's place the mouse tip anywhere on an open area of the taskbar right click one time. Move the mouse tip over toolbars and you will see we have a couple of choices and let's begin by clicking on address. This adds the Internet Explorer address bar to the taskbar and we can move it over a little bit, we can size it. So to demonstrate this let's assume we want to quickly from the taskbar visit Google. So just type in google.com, hit enter, 
and Internet Explorer will automatically open to the Google page. Let's type in Bing. And now Internet Explorer will display Bing. This is a very nice feature. It saves us a click in opening Internet Explorer. Let's close Internet Explorer. And now I'm going to show you how we can add our favorites bar to the taskbar. Place your mouse tip over the taskbar, right click once. Place your mouse tip over toolbars and check links. Now let, we have to scoot this over a little bit and you will see links essentially our favorites bar from Internet Explorer. These are the same four items that we had on our favorites bar. So let's click on Google from links and let's compare. So in our favorites bar you'll notice they are in a slightly different order than they are in our links on the taskbar. It appears that the taskbar sorts them alphabetically but if you really like you can actually on the taskbar drag them about and put them in any order you like. Let's close Internet Explorer. Now let's talk about the notification area. Those are those little icons that often appear to the left of time. The icons that appear in the notification area are really little helper programs of the main programs that we have installed on the computer. As you can see, none of the icons are displayed here. I actually have them hidden. As you can see, this little tiny up arrow, I'm going to click on this. I've hidden the icons so I don't have to see them all the time and I, I can actually customize when they will appear and what they will tell me. So I'm going to click on Customize. Let me change the screen a little bit. And here are all of the little helper programs that often appear in the notification area. As you'll notice on the right hand side under Behaviors I have all of mine set to only show notifications. So I'm going to show you how we can customize the actions of each one of these and when they will appear. So let's scroll down a little bit and let me show you for example Dropbox. Dropbox is a popular cloud-based file sharing program that I use and alongside it says only show notifications. So let's see what the options are by clicking on this drop down arrow and I see we have three possibilities. One is show icon and notifications and when I click on this you'll notice that the Dropbox icon appears. This selection says always have this icon appear whether something is taking place or not. I can hide the icon and notification and then it will never appear. It's still running in the background, it just won't show up. I like to set it to the third option which is only show notifications. That basically means that only when Dropbox has something important to tell me as a file has been added or deleted that's when it will appear. Otherwise I don't need to see it. So you can go through your list and change the behaviors of all of yours. Uh, many people will have, for example, the volume appear, uh, the network. So the choice is totally up to you. So for right now, turn them off. Or I should say I'm going to put them in only show notifications. And lastly, I'm going to show you in the notification area how you can turn on and off some of the typical system icons. So let's move the mouse tip to the lower left-hand corner of the notification area icon window and let's single click. And you'll notice these are the system icons that we are very familiar with, including the clock, volume, network, etc. Some people don't like to see the time, and as you can see here, it's set to on. So watch what happens when we click on off. The time is gone. So let's turn it back on. So as you can see here, between this window, and I'm going to click OK because we're done, and the notification area icon window, we can customize how these icons appear. Let's click OK. Now, for the sake of demonstration, let's click on Word. Let's click on Internet Explorer. And I have two windows appearing. Now, for whatever reason, I might want to automatically easily hide them because I'm doing something else. And so that's where the fifth area of the screen comes in handy, which is the Show Hide area. And it's in the right corner. And simply by placing the mouse tip over this section and clicking, they hide they appear. Click on it and it toggles hidden and show. 
And those are the major areas of the taskbar. I hope this video has given you new ideas to help you save time and stay competitive. If you found this presentation helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the Workflow and Style channel. Your comments and recommendations are always appreciated. This is Fred Litt. Thanks for watching.